It's Friday night on the Las Vegas Strip, and tonight we are playing at the beautiful Aria Poker Room. They have three 510 games running, all with a $5,000 cap buy in. It's deep stack poker, and this first hand, there's a straddle on for 20. A recreational player races to 60, and I call in the cutoff with Jack 9 suited. We go heads up to King King 9 to Diamonds. I flop a pair. He bets out $200 on this board. Pretty big bet. Can't go anywhere with my pair here, so I make the call. Turn card 7 of diamonds, and now my opponent looks back at his cards, slows down, and checks over to me. I'm not going to be betting here, so I check back, and the river card is the 6 of hearts. 3 diamonds on the board, we have a pair, but we are losing to 10s, jacks, queens, aces, a king, a flush, and my opponent now bets $500 on this river. Not a great spot to be in. As I previously stated, we're losing to basically everything he's betting here for value. All of his bigger over pairs, a slow plate flush, a full house, a king, aces. But would he be using this big sizing with a hand like aces? With a hand like queens or jacks? I don't think this particular player would be going that big. I don't think he would be checking a flush to me here on the turn. So once he bets this big, he's saying he's got a very strong hand or a bluff. My hand's just too strong to fold, so I decide to put in the one chip call. We get the good news right away when he says, you're good. Looks back at his hand and shows ace-queen offsuit for ace high. I show the jack nine for a pair of nines, and we were put into an interesting spot there right off the bat, but winning a decent pot right after we sat down. I get moved over to a main game where the straddle is constantly on. It's 5, 10, 20. I've got queens in early position raised to $50. The button calls, big blind calls, straddler calls. Four ways here to 9, 4, 7, 2 hearts. We flop a good over pair here with queens. When it checks to me, I can't be checking on this board. Even though I am multi-way, there shouldn't be too many two pairs in my opponent's ranges, so I feel pretty comfortable betting $150 here on this board. Button gets out of the way, big blind gets out of the way, but the straddler ends up making the call. Heads up now, six of hearts on the turn. My opponent checks over to me. The pot's over $500, and he's got about $480 left in his stack. Now, this card did bring in the flush. It could bring in some two pairs and some straights, but given the fact that he's got less than a pot size bet left, I just go with it here with my queens. If he's got me beat... He's got me beat. I put them all in for $500, and he pretty quickly calls, which is probably not good news for us. I mean, he could still have a top pair holding, maybe pocket 10s, a pair plus flush draw. But when he goes all in here, we run out the river, and it pairs the board with another 9. I'm not feeling good about my hand, especially when he shows ace 5 of hearts for the nut flush on the turn. And I end up doubling this guy up here, my first hand at the main game. About a half an hour later, the same opponent I just doubled up there with pocket queens, limps for $20. I've got king 10 offsuit on the button. I decide to iso raise here to 100. It's somewhat of a loose isolation raise. I get a call from the big blind and a call from the limper. Three ways to queen, nine, six, two spades. When it checks to me, I decide to check this one back, trying to realize some of my equity. And the turn card is d four of spades. So now we do have an over card a flush draw, and a gut shot straight draw. The limper now leads out for $160. I feel like we are getting a good price here to draw to one of our outs, and it's possible we could bluff here on the river depending on what happens. So I make the call for 160 and the big blind folds. Heads up now, and my opponent checks in the dark. River card three of clubs. We miss all of our outs. No flush, no straight, no pair. He checks in the dark. I don't feel like he's gonna have too strong of a hand. I could give up here and check back, or I could go for a bluff, trying to get him to fold out a weaker queen, a nine, a six, or a pocket pair. So I bet out $400 here on the river. This bet I would classify as power poker, something that was more popular maybe 10 or 15 years ago. When you think your opponent's weak, you just put money in the pot. Now, my hand doesn't really make too much sense at all. I checked back on the flop, just called the turn, and now I'm betting huge on the river when the three of clubs comes out. What am I trying to see? I have a flush, two pair that I check back on the flop, a set, aces. So, of course, my opponent is in the right here to be thinking for such a long time. When he checked dark on the turn, I just feel like he's never going to have a flush. He's never going to have two pair or a set or even a queen X hand. So this bet is just trying to target his middling part of his range. 
those middling pocket pairs, those 9x hands. Maybe we can get this one through. My opponent is really making me sweat on this one. He is taking his time. He's going back over his options, call or fold. And of course, inside I'm thinking, fold, man. Let it go. Live to see another day. But eventually he calls. I say king high and show. And he shows pocket eights for third pair. Well, king high is not going to beat pocket eights. My opponent makes a great read and a good call on the river. And we give him more money here on a Friday night at the Aria. Not winning some hands, but that could change when we look down at aces. There's a raise to 60, a 3-bet on the button to $210, and I cold 4-bet out of the small blind to $560. It's always great to 4-bet aces and get action. We're heads up here over $1,000 in the middle. Out of position to a king, jack, queen, all spade board. Holy shit, this is literally the worst possible flop in a 4-bet pot with pocket aces red on an all-spade board. I check over to my opponent, looking to probably just check fold if he puts out a big bet. I mean, we're only beating ace-king if he bets here for value, but he decides to check back. Turn card 7 of clubs. I'm just going to try to get to showdown in this situation, so I check over to him again. And my opponent checks back, and the river's the 10 of clubs now giving me a straight. I think I could go for a small bet here on the river, but I decide to check. He checks again. I show pocket aces for one pair, and they're good. We take down over a $1,000 pot. I'll be honest. When I saw that flop, I did not think that I'd be winning that hand with pocket aces there on such a wet and dynamic board in a four-bet pot, so I will take it, taking down some profit here. About an hour or so goes by before I peel back pocket jacks. I raised a 60 a tighter reg to my left who hasn't played many hands at all. Three bets me to $200. Back over here to an action player in the straddle who makes the call for $200. So I raise the 60 with jacks. I get three bet. There's a cold caller in between. Should we call here and go out of position multi-way with jacks or should we put in a four bet? My opponent here on the left could be using the strategy preflop of 3-bet or fold, which means he should have a wider range when he re-raises me here. He probably doesn't want to call very often, thinking that he can get players to call behind him or get squeezed out. So he could still have some suited connectors here, some suited broadways, some ace-high hands, some worse pocket pairs. So I decide to 4-bet it up here with jacks to $600. Over here on my opponent on the left who makes the call for 600 and I am a little bit concerned now. feel like he would definitely be folding out all of his mediocre 3-bet hands versus that 4-bet. So once he calls, I feel like he's probably got ace-king, maybe 10s, jacks, queens, kings, or aces. And now back over to the straddler who decides to back raise all in for $3,100. What is going on in this hand. I raise with jacks, I get 3-bet, a player cold calls, I 4-bet, a player calls my 4-bet, and now the straddler back jam 5 bets all in for $3,100. Just about 30 seconds ago, my pocket jacks were looking great, but now they are shriveling up facing a 5-bet jam for $3,100. I also have to worry about the tighter reg to my left, who could have queens or kings, I decide to let go of my hand thinking that I'm probably beat by one of these guys or flipping against one and crushed against the other. The opponent to my left who 3-bet me and called my 4-bet eventually puts in the chips almost $7,000 in the middle. Flop comes out king high, turn low card, river another king, and the straddler who went all in shows pocket sevens for a pair. And my opponent to the left shows pocket queen sevens versus jacks versus queens over a $7,000 pot. Next up here, we're straddling. There's a raise to $100. I've got queen nine of diamonds on the button. I'm getting a little frustrated losing almost every hand. So I decide to three bet here. I make it $340. Back over to my opponent who raised. He thinks for a little bit of time. My opponent here who raised has over a $10,000 stack. I've got about a $6,000 stack. When we're playing super deep stacked here, I want to play aggressive preflop. Either I can take down this money by him folding or he calls and we play a bigger pot here in position which is what happens 
He makes the call for 340 over $700 in the middle, three bet pot, queen nine of diamonds, and we flop a flush draw on king eight four. He checks over to me a standard C bet spot here. I make it $240, and my opponent check raises me to 700 bucks, and this just sucks. I feel like he's just always going to have a set in this situation either kings, pocket eights, or pocket fours. Don't think he's ever check raising here as a bluff. This particular player would probably just call with all of his draws. Also don't think he just has a King X hand. Because we're so deep stack in a three bet pot, I feel like he would just call with that hand. But he is giving us a pretty good price here to call and try to hit a diamond. If I can hit a diamond and he does have a set, we could win a massive $12,000 pot. I feel like I'm priced in. So I make the call for $700 looking for a good turn card. And we do not get it. It's a five. And now my opponent bets like $1,600, and I just snap fold. He later told me he flopped a set of eights. I mean, if I ran as good as Mariano, I would have hit that diamond on the turn and won a massive pot, but I run more like Lexo Poker, where I miss all my flush draws and straight draws. I'm down a couple thousand dollars, but at least the game is good and super deep stacked. We decided to do a double straddle round, $40 straddles out of the gun, and I peel back aces from first position what a great time to get aces when the double straddles on i raised to 120 and my opponent here from the last hand with the set makes the call we go heads up here to an ace queen five rainbow board flopping top set for me when he checks over to me i feel like we could bet small here or we could check behind given the fact that we don't have to protect basically from anything it's a rainbow board there's only gut shots left and we have top set. I check back and trap. The turn card is the four of spades. Now bringing in some straight draws. Also bringing in a flush draw. My opponent checks again. And now I bet almost a pot size bet of $250. My opponent likes his hand because he makes the call. And we get the worst river card in the deck. It's the three of spades. Any deuce makes a straight. Backdoor flush gets there. Six seven makes a straight as well. And my opponent snap leads out for $500. I'm super frustrated, but I don't think we're ever good in this situation. So I fold. And he told me he had six, seven of diamonds for a backdoor runner, runner straight. This is one of the most frustrating times in poker. When the game is really good, there's a ton of chips on the table and the pots are huge and you just cannot win any of them. My opponents are getting there with straights and flushes, and I'm missing all my straights and flushes. I had to fold top set of aces. Not a fun night for us. There is one particular player, though, in seat number one who is giving a ton of action. He sat down with like $10,000. He ended up losing all of that, and then he rebought again for more money, and he is definitely here to play. I get dealt in a beautiful king queen of spades from under the gun. I raise it to $60. The action player in seat number one makes a call on the hijack. And the button, who is an older Asian man who's been watching TV on his phone for the last two hours, finally wakes up and makes a call here on the button. You guys probably know what this player type is in Vegas. Hardly plays any hands. And when he does bet, he always had some monster. Well, we flop trips on king five king rainbow. I bet out $70 here and immediately I get raised by the action player in the hijack to $330. Bucks. Finally, a good spot for us. I feel like I'm just always going to be ahead of the action player here who's raising. He could have a five or a pocket pair or just a total airball bluff. My plan here is to call 330 and just let this guy bluff off his stack until the button, the tighter player in seat number three now, calls 330 bucks so my plan was just to call down and let this guy bluff off in seat number one but now once this tighter guy who hardly plays any hands makes to call in the flop i'm thinking things could get a little bit bad in this hand it's definitely possible the button could have ace king or possibly pocket fives i'm going to tread with caution here and make the call i've got a great hand but it's not super nutted we're going three ways now, over $1,000 in the middle, and the turn cards to 10 of clubs. I check, and now the action player to my left in seat number one slows down and checks, and the button now bets $400, and this is exactly what I was worried about. 
I feel like the button just has a monster in this certain situation, but versus this $400 sizing, I mean, I can't fold. I could still hit a 10 on the river or a queen if he has pocket fives. It's still possible. Maybe he has king jack or king nine. So I make the call for $400 and the action player to my left in seat number one makes the fold. Heads up now to the final card, which does not improve us. It's a brick and I check over to the button. My opponent thinks for about 45 seconds and then shoves his stack in there all in for over $2,000. Such a gross spot. We finally flop a monster and we are just probably always beat here. This particular player type, like I've said numerous times, just is never going to be putting in his money here without a super strong hand. It's possible he could have a flush here, but I feel like once he jams this river, He's just always going to have a full house, either king five, pocket fives, pocket tens, king ten. I don't think he would even be betting this sizing with ace king or king jack. We're basically beating nothing in the situation, so I just make the fold. Later, I asked him to tell me for the vlog, and he told me he had pocket tens called on the flop and then binked the full house on the turn. Tonight is just not our night. I'm running bad, losing down thousands of dollars. It's past 3 a.m., but we are not going to give up. There's still a ton of action on this table and a ton of money. There's a raise to 120 over a $40 straddle. I call on the button with pocket fives. And now the big blind, seat number one, complete maniac action player, three bets. He had just been three betting playing almost every single hand. He makes it 550 bucks. The hijack player who open raises makes to fold. I now look over at seat number one. He's got about $6,000 in his stack. He has been playing almost every single hand. I want to try to play as many pots as I can with this guy while he's giving so much action. We have a pair. I've got about 6K in my stack. We could win a massive pot if I flop big. So I decide to call $550. And we get a Mariano style flop here. Ace 5-5 five, five, flopping quads at 3 a.m. against a crazy action player. Just kidding. I am not that lucky. I do not run that good. The board is actually ace, ace, king, two spades. A wonderful, wonderful flop for pocket fives, right? If the big blind bets here, I'm just going to frustratingly fold. But he decides to check now over to me. So I feel like in this situation, he could have any two cards. He could have a full house. He could have quads. He could have an under pair. He could have 10 high. He could have seven high. So I feel like if he checks to me, I could bet very small here on the flop, giving me a free turn and potentially a free river. So I decide to put out a bet of $250. I guess you could call this bet a merge bet because I'm kind of bluffing and I'm kind of value betting. He can call with a lot of worse hands here. He can call with flush draws that we're beating. He can call with gut shots like queen 10 or queen jack. And sometimes we can even get him to fold out better hands like pocket sixes or pocket sevens. But really the reason I'm betting here on the flop is to try to get a free river and just try to stall the action and hopefully get to showdown here with my pocket fives. Once the big blind now thinks for over a minute and makes the call for 250, I am completely done with this hand unless I hit a five. Turn cards the eight of clubs, he checks. I check back. River card, deuce of diamonds. He checks again. I'm happy to check this one back and he shows nine seven offsuit for nine high. And pocket fives are going to win this one with an under pair to the board.
right back at the condo now a long seven or eight hour session it's around 4 a.m right now my eyes are getting tired my nose is stuffed up we got allergies going on out here and i just cannot seem to win at the aria poker room i don't know what it is in 2021 i think i lost seven thousand dollars total at the aria 2022 i think i played there like twice and then today i lost like 2400 dollars. but the game was actually pretty good it was 5 10 20 mandatory straddle sometimes 40 dollars straddle game was very deep stack like five six seven thousand dollars effective i picked up some big hands i made some hands i then didn't make some hands tried to make some bluffs they didn't go through i got pocket aces flop top set lost to a straight king queen flopping trips losing to a full house nothing really went my way got pocket jacks four bet lost to queens uh kind of a tough night but this is gonna happen obviously in poker i've been through this a lot and i actually feel like i handled it well where i didn't get on tilt i didn't get frustrated i didn't get impatient i didn't get angry annoyed um and i just tried to play my game and that that definitely happens a lot where you're losing and you're not doing well or you've gotten bad beat or coolered from a couple hands before so you make a big bad decision you lose a bunch of money i've done that multiple times and i felt like tonight even though i was losing even though things weren't going my way even though i just kept losing every pot I played, I couldn't make a hand. I still felt like I made good decisions while I was actually playing the hands. Like I hero folded pocket aces there. I hero folded king queen. I folded pocket jacks. Like sometimes you're gonna have to fold in poker and I'm trying to work on that. So I felt good with that. Unfortunately, we lost today, but we got a couple more days out here in Vegas. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I am tired. I gotta get some sleep. And uh, yeah, that's it for this one. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. And until next time, I'll see ya.